You know, one of the greatest accusations that I get on this channel is that I do not read the comment section. So I'm tricking people to say I will see you in the comment section, but I never do. I never read the comments. But the reality is that there is a lie. I do read the comments. And to prove to you, here is wisdom. In my previous video, where I said that hypocrites are going after heel versus babyface over pronouns, I did say that he is out of line, but he is right. And a lot of people were outraged that they were saying, no, V, he wasn't out of line. It's a meme. Like, how should I spell it out? Do, do you guys not go on the internet? Like, I, I normally do not like to criticize my subscribers. And obviously not all of you, but like the ones of you that took umbrage with the fact that I said he is out of line. Okay, like only those people. Only those. Do you not go on the internet? Do you not stay in touch with the current memes? Are you becoming old? I, I don't know how to explain it to you. It was a joke. Because believe you me. Right now, as a content creator, defending babyface is the most politically incorrect thing you can do. Like, like the, the easiest thing you can do is to attack him, to make fun of him, to ridicule him. Like, there have been people that wished him ill and nothing happened to them. Like, no terms of service violation. Like, I see people on the left being as edgy as humanly possible. Uh, making fun of his appearance, uh, Hassan Piker saying that he needs a lobotomy, like, like all of the nasty stuff were thrown upon him, and no one got a single TOS violation. Not a single person, right? That is the easiest thing to do. The fact that I am defending him, if you think that I'm not all in, you haven't watched my channel enough. You don't see what I post on Twitter or what I say on my Discord. I am all in with this guy. Like, I regret absolutely nothing. When I say that he is out of line, but he is right, that is the meme that I'm referring to. I do not think that he did anything wrong, by the way. Even the fact that he was screaming and having like this uh, interesting rant, I even defended him for that. And I said that, well, as a content creator, you have to be entertaining. Like, watch my video. I did say that. As a content creator, you have to be entertaining, and that's what the market wants. But I will say something even more, though. It is the best thing ever that he had the disgruntled rant. Because that is what made this video go viral. Like, the left is making this popular. I would have never known about his rant if it wasn't for the left. The thing is, I cannot watch his channel. I, I watch some of his videos every now and then. But you gotta understand, like, I have a video game to make. I have five other YouTube videos that I have to make daily, Saturday and Sunday. I don't really have the time to watch all the YouTubers that I would like to watch. And, and many times... What they talk about is something that I already know because it's part of my job to get uh, involved and to know what they're talking about. So, <clears throat> I would have never, ever heard about his rant if it wasn't for the left. And, and his rant now is in the, the normies' mindset. And normies started looking a lot deeper into this video game and they found exactly the problem with it. It's not like, like the pronouns are the tip of the iceberg. But the pronouns are the signifier of what's going to happen in the rest of the game. And I made a live stream and I said like, just because the game has pronouns, it's just because that, I've never played the game, I've never touched it, but I will tell you a couple of things that are happening in the game and I want you guys to tell me if I'm right or not. And I said this, every single faction leader, major faction leader is going to be a woman. You're going to have at one point a marginalized character that's probably from within the LGBT community coming up and saying that they're being oppressed, that they're being mistreated because they're a minority. The evil guy is going to be a cisgender white man. Uh, like, like all of these things I have predicted without playing the game a single time. Again, I do not know if I'm right or not, but these are my predictions. All the women in the game are going to be ugly. But then again, you know, like people will say, well, it's a Bethesda game, so that makes sense. But, but the main problem that I have with this is that like it, it's like playing a game that you have spoilers for. Like you already know what's going to happen. You, you're already aware of the plot points. And it makes for a bad game. It breaks immersion. It's like going to a movie where you know what's going to happen. And how do I know? Well, because like all the woke games are the same. Forspoken does it. Um, Outer Worlds does it. Like, all of the... And the reason they do it is very simple. 
they do not believe in making compelling characters. Like, if you go back into the 90s and you see how Lady Arabeth was made, or you see how Tali Zora Vas Normandy was made, they, they are compelling characters that are written to entertain people. Walk developers write representation. They do not write a character that's interesting, that has flaws, that is like a human being that's trying to emulate genuine emotions. No, they write representation. So when you write a representation as a character, you cannot have that character display any type of flaws. Because, like, for example, if you want to add a black character that does drugs, right? So he's got, like, this drug addiction, and maybe you as the player has to help him out. You can't do that because you're, the writer would be suggesting that all black people are like that, that all black people have a problem with, with addiction. So you can't put that in a video game. So if you want to create a story about a character that's incompetent, that's goofy, that's the comedy relief, it has to be a straight white man. Anything else is unacceptable. Because again, they're not trying to craft a believable universe. They're not trying to create a believable world. What they are trying to do is push a political message and they have to follow certain guidelines. And this is why their stories are so goddamn predictable. And, and they break immersion. The pronouns are just like the, the signifier. Like they let you know. It's like, by the way, this is a red flag. The following game is going to have the, the following scenarios. It's like, how can I predict this? How? I've never played the game. I've never touched it. I've never, I'm not even interested. It looks like some gray shit. It, it, it's not colorful. It's not beautiful to behold. Doesn't have any type of gameplay that would interest me. It, it, it's, it's not something that I even wanted. But like, the moment I saw the controversy, I managed to do these accurate predictions. And there's another problem with woke games, by the way. You can't be evil. You can't be a dick. I've been saying this since Baldur's Gate, uh, the, the remake that they made. Um, <clears throat> no, sorry, Baldur's Gate like 2.5 or 1.5. Like it takes place between the two. I, I forgot. The, the one with the crusade. Uh, the main problem with it is like if you want to play an evil death knight. Well, you can't. You know, you can be evil to a certain extent. You can be a dick to many people. But the moment the person with the pronouns comes up, you have to be respectful. They added like a, a transgender person in the game. And again, like, that is the only NPC that you have to be respectful. You don't get a dialogue option to be disrespectful. Like, you have a dialogue option to be an asshole with everyone else. But with that person, you have to be respectful. Uh, the Last of Us had the same problem, The Last of Us 2. You have, like, the bad guys, the villains, and they're part of some evil cult. And uh, they, they don't like uh, one of the female characters there that transitioned. So you have, like, a trans, uh, a trans man in the game, they will not misgender that person. So, like, they, they are willing to, to go as far as to try to kill that NPC in the game, but they would not use misgendering towards them. And it's like, well, I'm sorry, but that's not realistic. Like, if you genuinely want to portray transphobes in your game, if you genuinely want to portray the bad guys, have them act like bad guys, but they can't. Because, like, again, like, like, it is something that their ideology doesn't allow. So you're making like these very streamlined games, which, you know, like in certain games, it may work. But, but when you look at it from a RPG point of view, where you're supposed to allow the player f to have freedom, they don't. And if you look at what the game journalists are saying, they're actively pointing it out. Like they are actively saying that players shouldn't have freedom. You want to restrict the player. So why would they support that? Right? And on top of that, when you look at this company, which did not want to give a sponsorship to Dr. Disrespect for political reasons, then I have to wonder, why would I support that as well? So you have influencers like Dr. Disrespect, which can reach tens of millions of people with his ideas, with his takes, but they shouldn't be his ideas and his takes. It should be the corporation's ideas and takes. So what the corporation demands, that's what the streamer sh should do, right? So basically every single streamer that had the sponsorship from Bethesda means that they have the same opinions, the same ideas, the, the same ideology. And, and I, I think that's a problem. Why should I support that with my money? Why should they take my money so that they can socially engineer people? You're an entertainment company. Know your fucking place. Let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.